I mean, I don't know if we can ask for more as far as a front court matchup, but when you're looking at UCLA bouncing back, what needs to happen? Well, first of all, you don't see UConn losing very often, right? To lose twice already in a season, but they are going against the opponent. I think nobody wanted to play in this pack of, of eight teams because this is a team that's deep. They have people coming off the bench. They are have firepower in every position. I actually expect this to be a really close matchup tonight. All right, starting with the Jayhawks, that is our visiting team for tonight. Let's look at who's going to stand out to you. Starts with Franklin. Yeah, and you know what? Samaya Nichols, oh, sorry, actually, sorry, that's Maya okay. <laughs> this is a player that came in the game yesterday and just made a splash. She plays the four position. She had her hands on the ball, was able to get deflections. She's a great compliment to Tiana Jackson, Tiana Jackson inside because she takes pressure off of her, the way she's able to score. She was a phenomenal player and helped Kansas almost get that win against Virginia Tech. What a thrilling finish towards the end of the game. They had 5.7 left, but can't escape with the upset over Virginia Tech. How about Paige Becker? So 31 points and just continues to show everyone why she was the National Player of the Year just two seasons ago. She, there's not a gamer in the women's game like Paige Beckers. And I just mean somebody that when she needs, when you need a bucket for your team, you're going to Paige Beckers. 31 points, five of 11 from the three point line. She single-handedly got UConn back after a huge 28 to 12 deficit in the first quarter to UCLA. Of course, it wasn't enough to overcome it, but an excellent performance by the player of the year. All right, well, let's look at the starting lineups for Kansas. You had Yvette Mayberry, Tiana Jackson, who said she wanted to be in a better performance for today. Actually fouled out of the previous game against Virginia Tech. And so you're looking on the other side as well for UConn and a more of a mix up in their starting rotation as well with Caroline Ducharme not playing for her second consecutive game. Ashlyn Shade, the freshman out of Noblesville, Indiana, who get her first career start. KK Arnold actually got her first career start in game one. So that game against UCLA, she'll be coming off of the bench. And we're underway with the Jayhawks starting off with the Rock first. Our officials for tonight are Jay Vasily, Fatu Sissoko Stevens, and Meadow Overstreet. And this is what I've been anxious to see is how are they going to play Tiana Jackson? They elect not to bring the double. They're going to go one-on-one. -on -one. Aaliyah Edwards and Jackson inside. And Jackson makes her pay. Jackson coming off of the game, as we mentioned just earlier, against Virginia Tech. Four for eight from the field. Had four rebounds. And had four fouls to add to that as well. So definitely something where she wanted to be a little bit more dominant within this game. And yeah, she was so limited because of those fouls. And not only did it limit her in terms of time on the floor, but just in the way she played, because she had to be safe when she was on the floor. She was going up against a huge opponent in Liz Kitley. Private Mayberry had a nice look at the rim, but can't knock it down. But on the other side, Ashley Shade gets the first point for the Huskies in her first start. Well, I'm laughing because there's something that happens. You know, you get your first start as a freshman for <laughs> UConn, by yes, the way. You yeah. know, I mean, this is not for some little small town, like small town team. And the first two shots of the game are taken by the freshman. I love it. But how about <laughs> Mayberry getting her shot to fall from the corner? Mayberry ended the previous game with six total points, but this is a player that can get things done a little bit on the floor. That's a quick response by UConn. Yeah, Aubrey Griffin did a good job of posting up, getting position. They were trying to play high side, but Aubrey Griffin and Paige Beckers go after the rebound. Beckers comes up with it. This is the third time these two teams have actually been able to face one another as we take a look at the Kansas coach, and that's Brandon Snyder, ninth season at Kansas. And you mentioned the experience coming back for his roster, being a team that actually won the WNIT a season ago. And just through his tenure alone has brought KU back to the NCAA tournament in the prior season. A foul on this side of the ball will bring free throws on the way for the Jayhawks. 
Love the pace of this game already. Up and down, try to get the ball to Jackson inside. She gets fouled, and that's your go-to. You got to work your offense around the big girl inside. When Jackson gets a touch, she's either going to score or she will pass it out of the double. WNIT MVP last season, averaged 17 points, but walking away with five double-doubles within that season as well. Came back for this season, of course, could have elected to go to the WNBA, but wanted another season in NCAA to help perfect her game, move her to another level. And I know there are WNBA scouts interested in the way she plays and and I think she's going to have a tremendous year. I think that's textbook for Paige Beckers and how she was able to free herself up for that bucket. Well, she hasn't had the ball in her hands a lot on offense. We mentioned already Ashlyn Shade, the freshman, taking a couple shots. They've had a few in transition, and now Paige Beckers touches the ball and scores. Feels right. Shade comes down with the rebound. Hands it off to... Mika Mule as we go to the sideline for the Huskies and you have Gino Ariema in his 39th season, over 1,100 wins. Actually can get to 1,200 in this season, 11 national titles, which everyone knows of, and the Hall of Fame coach inducted in 2006. Not happy with his team's effort across the board against UCLA, down by as many as 23 points in the first half and never had the lead in the game. I think Aubrey Griffin, by the way, could be a really important part of this game for UConn because Aaliyah Edwards is going to be taken. I mean, there's a lot of attention on her because of Tiana Jackson, who's guarding her. So that will free up Griffin to take some shots. Griffin almost had a double-double on last night. Had 11 points to add seven rebounds as well. But a fearless player, very long athletic frame getting to the bucket. Aaliyah Edwards, we're seeing more of a sense of urgency on the inside from Edwards. And already now two fouls for Tiana Jackson. And I think that may have been the game plan. Bring Aaliyah Edwards outside the foul line. Now we've seen it twice, right? Make Tiana Jackson foul you on the drive. She has essentially taken away the big time threat on the interior by both of those drives. Average three blocks per game, and if you're looking at that type of tendency, you're also saying she's going to go after the squad. So great game plan for the Huskies to attack early, which sends her to the bench. So back in the same area she found herself yesterday, where the Jayhawks had to go without her for a substantial amount of time because of foul trouble in the first quarter. It changes everything right now for the Jayhawks because you have lost the go-to. You've lost where you want to start your offense from. UConn picking up in some full court pressure. And now the guards need to be stepping up for Kansas. A lot of contact. Black call by Paige Beckers. Looks like the right call. Just slid in a little bit late on that attempt. Paige Beckers was absolutely beat up in the game yesterday. And, mm. and same story here today already. Taking the contact, yeah, leaned into her. Definitely the right call. Three players around the driving nickels. Unforced error there for Kansas as that's their first turnover of the ball game. UConn hands the ball back, and Paige Becker actually picks up back-to-back -back fouls in the open court. And you got to credit Skylar Gill for getting her hand on the ball there, causing the turnover. Watch her defense. She was recently named a Sun Defensive Player of the Year back when she played at North Alabama. Comes here as a transfer and getting some good minutes for this Kansas Jayhawks team. 
So a little bit of foul trouble to both of the stars coming out of this one as Paige Beckers goes to the bench with two fouls. But a little over half of the time left in this first quarter. So a three second call, we couldn't quite see the official <laughs> on the baseline, Karen Piatto. Nika Mule with the rebound, the 5'11 senior on the glass, getting another opportunity for UConn and another travel call for UConn, which will send it back to the Jayhawks. I see that three step so often when people are trying to catch and I am so glad that the officials caught that. I will watch it and be like, how is that not three steps taken? That's exactly what happened right there on the sideline. Great call by the- Nichols the going into the chest of Ashlyn Shade. Finds a way to get the bucket. On the other end, a block and a hard foul, I mean a hard fall by Skylar Gill. Those are huge energy plays. Coming from a young player, good job matching up, taking her matchup very seriously. Had Paige Beckers earlier, that says something about her defensive efficiency. Kansas doing everything they can defensively to try to stop this UConn attack and then turn, score, Samaya Nichols, our player to watch. Welcome back. You're looking at the series history between the two teams. This is the third meeting and UConn has now lost to the Jayhawks and Kansas trying to change that tune, down one in this ball game, a little less than five minutes to go in the first quarter. And you're looking at just an opportunity for Brandon Schneider to bounce back from that heartbreaking loss that they had against Virginia Tech, another ranked opponent that they see in this tournament. Yeah, we got to talk to him after the game too. He could have won the game on a side out of bounce play. He actually had a few opportunities with timeouts. And he said, unfortunately, we just did not run the play correctly. We couldn't get it executed. They didn't get the shot they wanted. Obviously, they would love an opportunity to be in a late game situation with the Yukon Huskies. Top of the key, Aaliyah Edwards short on the shot. Gill tries to, get, to fly in for the rebound. That's corralled in by KK Arnold. In the game for the Huskies off the bench. Edwards saw the lane, tries to scoop, nothing there. This is the third opportunity for the Huskies, but they'll actually step on the baseline and give it back to the Jayhawks. Jayhawks for a team that were on the NCAA tourney bubble last year. What, nine and nine in Big 12 play. And actually got a really nice win over Columbia, a team that everyone respect, respects across the field in Ivy League play. Less than 10 on the shot clock. Gill, ball over her head. She's gonna have to make something fly. Gets it off the rim, but no one underneath for the rebound for the Jayhawks. Beautiful dish on the inside, and Aubrey Griffin gets the assist. Oh, Aubrey Griffin came to play today. We knew that she was a special kid. 11 points, seven boards, four steals for her in that game yesterday against UCLA. But she already has been impressive for the Connecticut Huskies. Four points for her, two boards, and just a defensive stopper. The pull up back iron by Nichols. Samaya Nichols, a player that you had highlighted at the beginning of the game right now. One for three from the field, two points. Dish on the inside, 
Nika Mule all the way to the rim gets the N1. And Nika Mule with Paige Beckers out of the game will have to be more of a scoring point card. Yep. Decides not to do the dribble handoff, takes it all the way herself, gets the and one, and that forces another foul for Papa Dapulu. So now two in foul trouble for the bigs for the for Kansas. Remember, Papa Dapulu actually fouled out of the game against Virginia Tech, and that was a lot of shuffling for Coach Schneider and the Jayhawks as he had front court foul trouble for his bigs, and a foul is going to go against UConn on this one. A.K. Arnold, you know, Aubrey Griffin actually on this one. Boy, might have just been frustrated with the call on that last possession. Mark Resch. Making sure everything is okay with Miss Griffin. Strong take to the rim. Nothing called there. Cobbins with the rebound, and they're going to call a tie up on the other side. KK Arnold, who finished with 11 points last game. You can see why her spark off the bench is needed for UConn. Yeah, she didn't get the start today. I was wondering why, but maybe this is why, because she comes yeah. in and she gives them such good minutes. Look at the way she ties up the ball, the quick hands on that, and then celebration from her teammates. Job well done. Griffin flying in. Had a nice look for the inside touch. And UConn, just like we saw with LSU, relentless on the offensive and defensive glass. Bodies everywhere. Bounce pass on the inside to Cobbins. That was broken up. Jayhawks will get it back 16 on the shot clock if we have another substitution for the Huskies. Caden Samuels, the freshman out of Maryland, will check in. Rotation has been excellent for the UConn Huskies in terms of their defense. They are playing off. It's a very hands up, very aggressive defense. Lots of help. Mayberry had nowhere to go as she went in the chest of Aubrey Griffin. And we said her name a lot <laughs> to start the game yesterday. And nothing has changed today. Yeah, yeah, I mean, just, She's just a talented kid. She understands the game. She's so athletic, and she stands at six foot one, uh, and yet she has the skill of a guard when it comes to just handling the ball and the way she gets to the rim. Quick turnaround by Ice Brady. Another attempt on the inside. Ice Brady once again, nothing there on the second attempt. She wanted the love, and I love that Nika Mule got it to her, just could not finish. Gill left alone. Kansas hit four triples last night. Beautiful dish on the inside. And yeah, right now, because of the Princeton offense of UConn, the middle has been way too wide open. The Jayhawks have to do a better job of helping off and making sure that those straight line drives to the bucket are at least altered, if not stopped. Right now, UConn on a 9-2 run. Less than a minute to play. Ice Brady is able to send that one up. 14-4 to four is the rebound differential in favor of the Huskies. Ice Brady. Mayberry thought about it, decides to reset everything for the Jayhawks. Oh, 
KK Arnold picks up her first personal foul as we'll see Aaliyah Edwards check back in the ball game. Have another one on the way with Ashlyn Shea checking in as well for Aubrey Griffin. Skylar Dill will check out of this one. 29 seconds left in their first period. Really been their heartbeat on the defensive end we've seen within this tournament. Yeah, she hasn't had her offensive game clicking yet, and we saw some of that yesterday, but her defense definitely set the tone early in this one. It's just Kansas has not been able to score. Obviously, with Tiana Jackson out with foul trouble, they have not had their anchor inside. Holly Kirschdieter at the line, the fifth-year senior. Madison Springs, Oklahoma. Personal foul as we'll see Aaliyah Edwards check back in the ball game. Have another one on the way with Ashlyn Shea checking in as well for Aubrey Griffin. Skylar Dill will check out of this one. 29 seconds left in their first period. Really been their heartbeat on the defensive end we've seen within this tournament. Yeah, she hasn't had her offensive game clicking yet, and we saw some of that yesterday, but her defense definitely set the tone early in this one. It's just Kansas has not been able to score. Obviously, with Tiana Jackson out with foul trouble, they have not had their anchor inside. Holly first Jeter at the line, the fifth-year senior. Madison Springs, Oklahoma. And knocks out the second of the pair at the free throw line. 29 seconds, shot clock off. Shonika Mule holding for the last second shot. KK Arnold didn't like the look on the inside. Crossing over, going at about two defenders. Finds Edwards on the baseline. Who's able to get it to go at the buzzer? Leah Edwards. Not just a back to the basket post player. Stepping out, taking the 15 footer. Leaving no time left for the Kansas Jayhawks to make another play. Beautifully executed. Kick out, one dribble. Defense not there. Leah Edwards and company trying to do what they can with Paige Beckers on the bench in foul trouble. As we see the steel drum, of course, we got to have that while we're in the Cayman Islands Classic. We'll look at the all-tournament team from the first two games that we had earlier today. Between Virginia Tech and Tulane, Hannah Pratt was unbelievable. I mean, she was lighting it up from outside, definitely earned her spot. Elizabeth Kitley had a 30-point game in the first one, sealed the deal in the second game as well. Kiki Rice has been unbelievable for UCLA as they walk on and be undefeated in this field. Number two team in the nation as Niagara Chardonnay Hartley as well. What did you like about Niagara? They never quit. Yeah. We either. saw it in the first game. We saw it in the second. It did not matter that they were playing the number two team in the nation. Yeah. They didn't care. They hustled every single play. Every player that came off that bench had heart. And that's what Jada Pierce wanted. She knew she likely would not come away with a win in this tournament, but she wanted her players to get better and to play against tough competition. And I believe that they will enter their next game, a different team. Niagara having to take on UCLA as well as LSU. Actually won the fourth quarter against LSU. Yeah, so Leah Edwards gonna get the ball in the high post. Look to drive and draw another foul against Tiana Jackson. Yeah, back in the ball game after sitting most of the first quarter with two. And that's exactly what happens. And you got to give that to her. That is the struggle with being in foul trouble. You can't play your normal defense. And Jackson is a paint protector. She is so difficult to get shots in over. Top of the key, shot by Franklin. Zakiah Franklin, first team all Big 12 last year, fifth in conference and scoring. We'll dial it up again from a different spot on the floor. This one's short. KK Arnold advancing this one in the corner. 
It's the second, third, fourth opportunities for UConn. You mentioned yep. the discrepancy in rebounds so far in this ball game. UConn, 15 to five. I imagine that's what Schneider harped on in his huddle. You cannot win a game. You can't be close in a game if you cannot get a rebound. UConn's getting offensive rebounds as well. Five to nothing in terms of offensive rebounds in favor of UConn. Eight-point ball game with the Jayhawks. With the possession, working the baseline. After some time goes off the shot clock, first cheater able to work her way to the rim. Well, I mentioned a few times yesterday, Chris Cheater was struggling offensively. It's nice to see her at least attacking the basket, the crossover. Nobody comes and doubles. Nick Mule makes it hard, ends up fouling at the end. But Kirst Cheater, one of those players that I think could have a big night. She averages 18 a game, only had five in the game yesterday. She's also a distributor, averages just under four assists a game. So really a, a, a big part of what Kansas does. Knocks down the free throw, fourth in the conference in free throw percentage, entering this tournament at 84%. Just makes that a two possession ball game for the Jayhawks. Jackson wanted to steal something that she likes to do using her speed in this matchup. So a travel call against UConn. And that'll be their fourth turnover, actually their fifth turnover of the ball game. I love to see Jackson get the ball inside and score. Set her up, yep, they come across with the screen. Franklin held up by two Huskies, and comes in. KK Arnold sends it up the floor, and a bit too much to handle as Caden Smith Samuels couldn't bring that one in. Aaliyah Edwards trying to calm her team right now. You don't have Nika Mule on the floor. You do, though, have Paige Beckers, and that feels very safe. UConn only had nine turnovers in their game yesterday against UCLA. First seater. Feels like she's found something on the baseline there with the Jayhawks. Was able to rebound her own attempt. Steps back, nothing there, and that's going to be a travel call. Aaliyah Edwards in her lane makes things twice. Uh, just the defense has forced Kansas into some turnovers already in this one. The sixth turnover for the Jayhawks. And some of them are unforced errors, like you just saw. They switch where Leah Edwards is and where Ale Aubrey Griffin is because they see that, yeah, the, the defender is Tiana Jackson, so they want Griffin to go. Jayhawks able to escape that scenario underneath as Mayberry. Nichols going at Edwards just off the rim and Jackson couldn't clean it up on the right side. Jackson sitting with three points, one for two from the field. She only played seven minutes in this ball game due to the two fouls earlier in the first quarter. And Edwards met the chest of Nichols and is called with the travel call. And that's a tough assignment for Nichols. She gives about three inches to Leah Edwards and but I don't think that she can't take her. I mean, she, we watched her yesterday, her defense. She is, she plays much taller than she is and she's very physical and difficult to get around. Forces Aliyah Edwards into travel. Samaya Nichols with two points. Looking to get things going as Franklin short on the shot. And right now it just looks like the Jayhawks are out of a rhythm on the offensive end, trying to finish in the paint. Yeah, forcing things. I think the ball needs to get in why bet Mayberry's hands more. She's the one who distributes and calms the offense. Edward, short. 
Every single shot, it seems, has been taken with Tiana Jackson guarding whoever it is on UConn. They are going at her and begging her to get her third foul. Nichols, men on the baseline, cost that one up. Well, they haven't had a shot at the rim the last two possessions. Right now, Kansas shooting 22% from the field. Paige Becker comes up top, pulls up, and a foul will be called against the Jayhawks as Aaliyah Edwards was trying to find her way on the rebound, and it will stay with the Huskies. After we return, they'll get the ball underneath. Huskies, 19-13 lead. You take of that one. <laughs> Well, if you're enjoying the Cayman Islands Classic, then be sure to check out flowhoops.com for exclusive content and post-game interviews. Join the conversation at Flow Hoops on all social media platforms. College Hoops tips off right here. When we say tips off, yeah. we literally mean it. They have some of the best tournaments across the board through different types of sports. We're excited that we can be in the Cayman Islands for the inaugural women's tournament here. And this is also a free game for viewers to watch as well. Yeah, and if you like this, you've got to get the subscription because this is where you watch all the preseason action. And then also when conference play starts, they have they follow numerous conferences, especially or one being the CAA conference and some postseason events and Flow Hoops is the place to be. And this is why we are here. Yeah, that's <laughs> you right. You can't say it any better. No. We've enjoyed our, our last three days, really, essentially, here in the Cayman Islands. And what's the coin phrase? Cayman kind that we've oh. come across. So many different people that have been so great to us and welcoming us with open arms and the teams and the fans here. It's been a lot of fun running into so many different people that have a, a love and a passion for women's basketball. Yeah, and it seems like a great place to, to say thank you to a few people. Joe Wright, the CEO, and Victor O'Garo, the president, Jill Turk, chief strategy officer, Al Wilson, legal counsel, and man, have we loved Al and everything he's given us as UConn gets a bucket. Joanne P. McCallie, executive tournament director, all these people put together this wonderful tournament. We got to interview Joanne P. McCallie earlier today, and she was just so wonderful to hear from a former big time coach, coached at Michigan State and Duke, and she helped put this tournament together and had the vision for it. And wow, it's been so impressive. And if you talk to any coach as Jackson scores on the other end, they'll tell you the most difficult thing to do in a season is scheduling. Yeah. And knowing, especially if you're in the top 10, what teams want to take the sacrifice and say, okay, we're going to actually put you on the schedule. And for a lot of teams, especially with Kansas saying, hey, we want to play UConn. Right. <laughs> Kansas saying the same thing. We're going to play LSU defending champs and not backing down. That's why you love the parity within women's basketball in this season. Yeah, I don't think, you know, if you're like an, a sort of basketball fan, you wouldn't have thought that there were going to be some good games in this one. Maybe you would have seen one or two on the list, but really, we have had excellent games. Yeah. Only one that got out of hand today, and the others went right to the wire. Jayhawks trying to keep this a game with UConn. There's the drive by Samaya Nichols. She's one of my favorite players, I think, in the tournament because of what she brings and, and especially when you think about what she did with Tiana Jackson out in foul trouble yesterday. She came in and she essentially was the big. Very versatile for this team and that's what you want to see as well, bringing in for the Jayhawks. Nichols will get one more at the rim. And I spoke down. Only seven minutes so far in this ball game. And so both superstars on the bench in foul trouble for either team. Feels like it neutralized that aspect. But UConn still feeling like they have the advantage. 
but in different ways, though, for Tiana Jackson, who is more of that front court presence, you know where the emphasis is, but they showed that they could keep the game close against Virginia Tech. Paige Eckers <laughs> is, is the match for this offense, and coming off 30 points. Yeah. Who's the next person to, like, really fuel it? A couple of people have been able to step up. This one coming out deep by Ashlyn Shade, if she got the start today. Who else is going to be that person? that extends this lead for UConn. Five right. on the shot clock. We mentioned Aubrey Griffin's name a lot. And that's going to be a shot clock violation and frustration on the UConn bench as they'll give it back to Kansas with 1.4 on, right. on the game clock. Right now, Gino Oriama just sending a message right now, summing out his freshman for the remainder one second. Just to say, hey, you got to... You gotta run my stuff. You gotta know what you're doing. I want you to do things quickly. Full court heave, no good for the Jayhawks. That will bring it to a close. And UConn only up five against the Jayhawks as they're trying to avoid dropping back-to-back -back games here at the Cayman Islands. Well, if this went right to the second half, right, we doubled the score. I mean, the UConn Huskies would be scoring 50 points for a game. They average 80 or excuse me, yeah, they average 81. Both teams average 81. So low scoring, high defense, poor offense, but we've also got the big scores for both teams on the bench in foul trouble. I imagine it's going to look a little different in the second yeah. half. Yeah, on the second quarter, Kansas actually outscored UConn 11 to 8. So we'll see if that's going to be something they can build on in the second half. We'll have more highlights and tail of the tape. Oh, yeah, and more still drum coming up after the break. Both Edwards and Beckers have been have been on the selection for the Naismith Women's Player of the Year watch list. And we finally, in the second half, get to watch both of them take the floor. So we're excited to see what can be a little bit different for both sides. Five-point lead for the Huskies coming into this one as we kick things off. Campiato, Mark Resch, and Tony Patillo. On the call for tonight as well, as far as the officiating. Aaliyah Edwards, full steam, takes out Nichols. But Samaya Nichols slow to get up after that collision underneath. And we've watched the post players for Kansas. That's been where they've been trying to score their points. On the drive, that time, Samaya, or excuse me, Aaliyah Edwards extends the arm, goes in with the shoulder, and runs right into Samaya Nichols. Able to pop back up. That's like a train hitting you right in the chest. So Leah Edwards, so strong, so solid. I like the look going inside. It's a little bit more um, under control, getting to her looks on, this, on the floor. Yeah, and you know, she's also a player that can stop and pop. So you don't always have to go to the basket. I understand they're trying to draw fouls right now on the Kansas Bigs. And that's the defense I've been talking about. Getting a hand on the ball. Near still at the top of the key, but the Huskies able to end that possession with a stop. Samaya can't get the stop there, and Ashlyn Shade had the corner three. This can knock that down, so UConn still hunting for their first triple of the night. Samaya Nichols picks up her second personal foul. All the action in this game is happening inside the paint. Post players are getting fouls called left and right. There's so much physical activity. Paige Beckers, you also wonder for a lethal score such as Paige Beckers with the amount of time on the bench, how long does it take her to get warmed up in this one? She doesn't need a lot of time. Yeah, you know, she's, she's looking for her own shot. UConn in yesterday's game only had nine assists. That's that's not a lot for a UConn team, but honestly, it's because Paige Beckers just was trying to score on her own. She needed two. Nine assists, or 22 made field goals, and as you mentioned, five of them coming from Paige Beckers. Didn't take long at all. No, no. Came off the screen, got a pass, put it in, double screen, in fact, curled. Drew the defender into the screen, which I don't know why, but 
people do not do. Mm -hmm. The screen is there to get you open. And so often I see, not just guards, Angel, I'm not just talking about you, oh, but you guards go. not coming <laughs> <laughs> not coming off those screens shoulder to shoulder. I mean, we're there to set them, right? Yes. We're big. We've got a big body. We're just trying to help you. Most of you. <laughs> Some <laughs> of you. <laughs> Some of you don't. <laughs> <laughs> but you mentioned it. I mean, if you're going textbook, if you're breaking down page yeah. backers, it's not even just a shoulder to shoulder. It really comes down to even the footwork going into your shot as Jackson is able to get an offensive board. To also foul there, she'll get two free throws on the other end. And that's exactly right. As she's curling off of that screen, right? Her yeah. feet are already ready. Takes that inside step. And then on the other side, Curse Jeter goes up strong. And Tiana Jackson stays on the offensive glass. Had a birthday yesterday. Said all she wanted to do was win in this tournament, drop the first one in a heartbreaking fashion to Virginia Tech. Had the four fouls, but says it's a new day, wanting something different. As they're down eight now to the Huskies. And Tiana Jackson, with as pretty as that shot looks, just is having such problems from the free throw line. Two of 16 now on the season. Mm. The dish pass. Aaliyah Edwards was not looking at it. Ashlyn Shea tried to get it on the inside, and of course, the speedy Yvette Mabry adding another two to our stat line. Just her second field goal of the day. Yeah, those live ball turnovers turning into offense for Kansas, and there, how about Jackson with the hustle? But Aaliyah Edwards gets it right back. Three minutes into this ball game, Huskies are now down four to three in the quarter to Kansas. Yeah, great play there, running the double screen. Jackson rolls, receives the lob pass, easy two. Nika Mule with Paige Beckers, finds her at the top of the key, rare miss at the top from Paige. First feeder, starting the transition, Mayberry. And now was just an easy look at the rim. Yeah, poor, poor communication for UConn in transition defense right now. And yeah, Gino takes the time out. We were expecting that. Kansas Jayhawk fans on their feet. There are not, not many open looks you're going to find against the Huskies defense, and that was just a simple look on the right hand that's going to look or be the reason why Gino calls that timeout. I think some players are just trying to do too much, and a poor pass right there turns into offense. Mayberry just gets back every line of defense on that one, and then, how about this, hesitates, and somehow nobody comes over and picks him up. That's Aaliyah Edwards. If she gets past that first line of defense, Edwards has got to stop her. That last bucket for the Jayhawks led to a timeout for Gina Ariana and the Huskies, and they're just trying to put pieces together. They have different rotations so far for the starting lineup in this tournament, and when you look at the injury timeline, it really starts with AZ Fudd, and unfortunate news with her going down with another knee injury. Wishing her all the best. It's just really heartbreaking. Such a great talent. I know. Um, really love seeing her out on the floor, and especially with Paige Beckers coming back and after the recovery she had in the offseason, seeing her shine in this season, that's just something that the Huskies dealt with all last year. Yeah. I mean, she only played two games, as you see there, last season, and she and Paige Beckers are extremely close. They have been all through their basketball careers, and, and that's one of the reasons that AZ Fudd came to UConn, was so that these two could play together. And, and I mean, in fact, you think, you know, AZ Fudd is named for Jennifer AZ, a Stanford player, right? Yeah. Mom played at Georgetown. I played against her, Katie Smirka Duffy, and a phenomenal guard. So the fact that she ends up at UConn with uh, the phenom, Paige Beckers, has a lot to do with relationship. And um, so it's sad to see those two not being able to play together. Yeah, absolutely. We saw Samaya Smith go down for LSU. 
everyone was holding their breath as well in that second game today for LSU where Haley Van Lip uh, took a hit, went to the floor, and you can just it was just eerie silence, yeah. just making sure she was okay. She was able to return. LSU was able to leave the Cayman Islands with two wins as well, but you never want to talk about injuries when it comes to athletes overall, but especially some of the best talent you've seen in the country. China Jackson too strong on that one. She's got to use the glass in those scenarios. Backdoor by Paige Decker is one of the best players when you're seeing moving off the ball as Edwards steps in for two and gets it. That was more of a fluid look, more movement, not a stagnant for UConn. Nichols at the rim, wanted the foul, couldn't get it. KK Arnold pushing the pace. Has to send it back up top. This will be reset by Nika Mule. A lot of contact and Aaliyah Edwards still on the ground and might have took an elbow to the ear. Blocked at the rim by Jackson and Edwards still slow to get off the floor. Well, we mentioned it earlier, a lot of contact inside. Tough, strong, close play. We're gonna get a replay. Coach Dino Oriyama looking on. And you'll see it inside, Aaliyah Edwards trying Oof. to get position and I think hits the elbow. Yeah. Right to the face. Oh, it looks like right to the ear. Because of the tension above the shoulders, the officials are going to take a look at this move. There is a TV timeout, so as they step aside, we'll do the same. Hopefully we have an answer for you when we come back from the break. Yeah, because you're not allowed. So the officials are still at the monitor taking a look at the play that just happened on the other side of the break between Aaliyah Edwards and Samaya Nichols fighting for position on the block. And I know that you as a post player understand the movement it takes to get to positioning on the floor. What are your thoughts on this? Yeah, that's a swim move, first of all, for Leah Edwards. She's trying to gain position, trying to get a step ahead of the feet of Samaya Nichols. And as Nichols tries to also gain position, she uses her arm in the same fashion. I, I don't think it's egregious, as we mm -hmm. said in the, in the break. I don't think that it was intentional. I have a feeling that the officials will come over and say it was a basketball move. We had one of these yesterday. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I do appreciate that they can go to the monitor and make sure about these because anything, as you said, up above the, the shoulders and, and near the head area is, is serious. They've deliberated over this for quite some time, and we'll have an official come over and explain it to us. And uh, we're looking by rule for a potential unobserved. There's nothing that rises to the level of an intentional foul. If it's excessive or unnecessary. Incidental contact. It's UConn ball off the out of bounds. Try to get close enough so the audience can hear. So you can go to a play to review it for a potential unobserved. Uh, foul, just to check and see if it was egregious or anything that needs to be upgraded. They said it was just a normal uh, foul call there as UConn got the ball back and Paige Beckers gets the bucket out of the timeout. You talk about not a, needing a lot of space and time. Jackson. Might be the smoothest move we've seen from her tonight. Yeah, so no Edwards allows Jackson to play on a shorter defender. That'll be another foul that goes against Jackson as the duck in by Aubrey Griffin. Gets the and one, will get a free throw, but what a great recognition from the wing guard. Yeah, and another foul now on Jackson. She goes up to try to block it. 
I think in those scenarios, when your presence is needed on the floor, don't come down with your hands. I think just having the wherewithal as a post player too, not a lot of space that you can work with, but when you can find a pocket in space to get an easy look, Aubrey Griffin, there was no one around her. It looked like Jackson was on the top side right. and no weak side help, which led to her now completing a three point play. Yeah, definite breakdown for Kansas as they're watching this lead continue to grow for UConn. And look at the sagging man. There are players in, almost four players in the lane at every time for UConn, but still Kansas able to finish. Yeah, the biggest lead for UConn was 10. That was back in the second quarter. Kansas only led by three. Nice Brady with a good post. I'm surprised they didn't get her the ball, but Franklin will foul instead. So Samaya Franklin picks up her first. Hayes trying to get crafty with how she picks up her points and Aubrey Griffin. These fans should be really excited about what they get to see in this senior. Everybody needs an Aubrey Griffin yeah. <laughs> on their team. Look at this. Attacking the glass, finishing through contact. We saw her do that just a moment ago as well. Uh, relentless is the word. So tough. She's got a thin frame, but she does not play like it. What I like about that possession is ripping it off the glass, right? Could have taken it out, pass it out, reset a little bit. Deciding in that moment to say, no, I'm, I'm going to finish this on, on my own. Yeah, I'll take this one. Makes it an eight-point lead for the Huskies. Mayberry with the response from the corner, and it's just the response for the Jayhawks. Being able to go tit for tat, but... They want to find a way to get a defensive stop at some point. Here comes Griffin. It's Brady at the top of the key for the long two. Well, she needed that one. She was over in this game. That's a good look from the top. Less than three minutes to play here in the third quarter. We've gone back and forth for a first half that didn't have much offense in it, 25 to 20. We're seeing a little, a little different look from UConn. Off the glass, nice kiss from Zakiya Franklin. Here we are. <laughs> I remember this now, from now yesterday. We, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I know this story. A gentle reminder from Paige Beckers as they knock down their first three of the night. Oh, Paige with the steal. And the bucket back to back for UConn. That's going to lead to a timeout. There she goes. Paige Beckers putting her team up 10. Ties their hot, their biggest lead. It's like she's saying, okay, that's long enough. Yeah. We'll play with you no more. And Paige Beckers is going to do what she can to extend the lead. She starts it with a three. Look at that. Goes under the screen, gets screened. And her defender gets green, excuse me, and then comes back on the other side, tips it away, and gets easy too. Was that five points in three seconds? Yes. Well, I would say about seven. Yeah, okay. Well, that's but probably true. Either way, <laughs> really nice, right? To ask, right? So we asked for it at halftime. We were like, you know what? Yeah. We want to see a little bit better flow from both sides. Yes. Right now, UConn does have the 10-point lead, and they're off to a nice run with Paige Beckers. But on the other side, yeah. we're seeing the same thing with Kansas. Absolutely. 15 points already for Kansas from the half, or you know, just alone in the third quarter. They finished the quarter with 20, so much better offensive production for them. And you know, both teams are getting what they want. Yeah. Highest scoring quarter for both teams already, and we still got two minutes to play. UConn sitting at 20 and Kansas at 15. Mayberry coming off the screen. 
Fake on the inside. Franklin finds the rim. Perfectly executed out of the timeout. Yeah, with Jackson out on the bench. The Jayhawks still take advantage inside the paint. Franklin has done so well at getting both feet in and just laying it up over the rim. So the timeout called by UConn, they're down to two now. Both teams in the bonus on the next free throw as we look at Paige Beckers and how she's just on fire in the second half. Only played seven minutes in the first half due to the two fouls, but boy, are we glad that she is back on the floor after having that season ending ACL injury last season. Preseason biggest Big East player of the year and had that, but first game in 584 days. That was back on November 8th, stepping on the floor in Husky Nation, pretty happy about it. Yeah, well, you see pretty quickly, you could watch this game for five minutes and yeah. see how important Paige Beckers is and how skilled she is. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously she's important to UConn, she's important to women's basketball, but it's the work that she's put in to make herself a next level player. She was WNBA ready as a freshman uh, because of the work, the little things, as you mentioned, the stuff before the screen, the footwork, the follow through, reading defenses, understanding how to get her shot. And also she's a distributor. Yeah. She's not just a shot maker. A gym rat. Yeah. I was able to, um, over the summer, do an overtime elite game with her and we broke down the future of women's basketball. She was actually calling a few games with Michaela Williams and Malaysia Full Wiley and Hildago now at Notre Dame and seeing the talent coming in but right after we're done with games she's going into the gym finding ways to get shots up shooting endlessly wow. within the gym and I honestly wanted to check behind the curtain to see if there was a cot back there because that's how often she is within the lines trying to perfect her craft. Wow like that. Yeah. And that's where you, the injury to AZ Fudd, you just wonder what those two, how special this year you know, could have been. Of course, you, you hate even saying that, but the two of them together with this UConn team would be very different. And two, coming off of a season where all the attention was going towards as the Jayhawks knocked out a three. Going towards LSU and everyone wondering why they weren't, you know, picked preseason first. And she was like, we got to prove it. Yeah. We have a chip on our shoulder. And not being at full strength is tough to do that. But this opportunity is back-to-back -back threes as Nichols knocks that triple down. Back to a two-possession ball game, Kelly. And I was thinking they were going to keep Jackson out for the quarter. And the official is having words with, looks like, yeah, that's Ryan Palvins. Ice Brady will hit, take some free throws. And Jackson coming back in. I was thinking he was trying to protect her from picking up a fourth foul. Yeah. Might be a little risky in this situation off the free throws, but Ice Brady will get two free throws. Amari DeBerry will check in. So she'll come in for Ice Brady, the junior out of New York. Paige Beckers almost comes up with yet another steal. Doesn't get the steal, but gets the deflection that goes off the Jayhawks. And now they get another opportunity to hold the ball for the last second in this quarter. That's a baller. Jump in the passing lane. Kansas has to make better decisions. You cannot give possessions away. Night turnover for the Jayhawks.
Paige trying to get to her spot on the floor. Steps back, top of the key. Money ball. So that deflection, which turned into UConn possession, just turned into three more points moving into the fourth quarter. That is a special player right there. Gino Ariyama at one point told fans, we have Diana Taurasi and you don't. <laughs> well, in this case, they have Paige Beckers and you don't. Step back three, launches it from deep, knocks it down. Paige Becker, 17 points, two triples, the only for the Huskies tonight. Earlier this week, the Cayman Islands Classic actually crowned the new champions for the men's side. As you can see, the Utah State Aggies able to walk away with some new hardware going back as great. Osabor with the MVP. That's actually his name, right. the great Osabor. So congrats are in order to Utah State as they were able to kick things off here in the Cayman Islands. And now saying welcome on in for the women as we're in our inaugural Cayman Islands Classic. It's been so much fun. Four of the top 10 teams on the women's side have been in this field. We already saw LSU. We get to see UConn right now. We already saw UCLA undefeated in this tournament. And we also see Virginia Tech escaping two close games within this field. So we have been entertained from day one to the very last game, which is this one right here between UConn and the Jayhawks. It's been so much fun to work with you, Kelly. So much fun to work with you, Angel. And and yes to the teams, but how about the performers? Oh, we have man. seen 30-point games multiple times here in this tournament. Paige Becker's putting on a show in front of us. Liz Kitley, Georgia Amor, Lauren Betch, Charisma Osborne. I mean, the list just continues to go on. All tournament players from the two earlier games, Hannah Pratt for Tulane, Elizabeth Kitley for Virginia Tech, Kiki Rice for UCLA, and Chardonnay Hartley for Niagara. And a little later in the show, we'll be able to show you the remaining all tournament team for the last two games that we have. Paige trying to shake that off. Mayberry just ducking her head underneath Jackson, able to draw the foul. I don't know how Jackson came up with that offensive rebound. She's so deep under the basket. And just comes up and snatches it as Paige Beckers will take a rest. UConn up eight. We'll see how long that Gino Ariyama will have her on the bench. Seems like she's been hobbling a bit within this tournament as well. You can see her actually banging at that left leg. Yeah, she's been in pain. And, and then still, right, think of what she could do without being in pain. She dropped 30 yesterday. Maybe a 50-point eight? Maybe 60. Maybe, yeah. Because if she's in pain doing this right now, right. <laughs> scary hours. No. She just keeps getting better and better. And, you know, I, I think I questioned that when Gino said, you know, she's back and she's better. I was, I was just like, how? We've been out for over 500 days. I don't know how that's possible. And I, I, we, I've never seen a shooter like this. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've, seen, I, I, I've seen great shooters. I'm just saying the, just the way she can get her shot to fall. And how about the defensive stop there? Fourth yeah. quarter, this is what you need from the Jayhawks. Right? You got to step up and you got to put everything on the line. Yeah. And it starts on the defensive end. Yeah, good stop for the Jayhawks as they'll get the ball back. So the drive into the paint. And Kansas does a good job of feet staying set. So another foul will go against the Huskies. I kind of want to go back to what you were saying with Cage Beckers being one of the best shooters you've seen. Even over Diana Tawasi, yeah, she gets her shot off. Uh, Sabrina Ionescu, Kelsey Plum, right? Caitlin Clark that we're seeing right, now. Right, right. I mean, she's up there is what I mean. Like, oh, okay. I thought, I oh like, no, hey. I'm not going number one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I want to make sure I'm, I'm not saying that. Because <laughs> as soon as I 
said, I was like, one of, because I thought Diana. I was like, I don't know. I don't know. So a team that didn't have any triples in the first half now have three. Paige Becker's had the first two. Caden Samuels knocks that one down. A deep pin by Jackson able to get that off the glass. And that work starts early. Jackson is getting her deep before she catches the ball so that when she turns and spins, she has the location she wants on the low block. The duck in underneath. Looked all for Amara DeBerry and a block call underneath. That's going against the Jayhawks. Looks like Holly Hirsch Je Je Jeter was in the way for that one. And there's the kick outside. The freshman gets on the board for UConn. Aubrey Griffin at the line. Griffin had 11 points and seven rebounds against UCLA last night. How many times have we said her name tonight? Twelve points, now thirteen. Mayberry, the fake to the top of the key. I like the look for Jackson, but she couldn't connect on the left side. Yeah, it's exactly what she wanted, just couldn't fall. And now the mismatch. You've got Curse Cheater. They don't take advantage. Instead, an air ball from up top. From right away, she looked in. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, okay, my back coach. Whoops. <laughs> That's my fault. Do you know Oriema putting a lot of trust right now into his young players? We saw KK Arnold get the start yesterday, her first career start. You get Ashlyn Shea got the start today, and a lot of contact underneath. I think this is Ice Brady. Actually, no, it's going to be Amari DeBerry, I believe. Oof. Yeah, it looks like, yeah, mm. hand to the nose. And the foul will be called on UConn. So second foul, and then the officials going back to the monitor, just making sure they're keeping this safe. But we have a media timeout. UConn with a 10-point advantage over Kansas. We'll get back to game action after the break. <laughs> so the foul will remain on Amara DeBerry. That's going to be her second of the night. But they are going to look for an unobserved foul as well and that was on the take just to see if it was above the shoulder so we'll see yeah. what they will assess after they leave the monitor but they have been over there for a significant amount of time just to make sure they get the, the call right and, and as we saw as we looked at it the offensive player's hand does definitely go into the face yeah. it almost looks as if she's clearing out okay and uh, but I, I honestly don't know what the officials are going to say about that. Mm. I mean, I can't imagine if you went to a monitor for every time somebody drives and when you're watching all kinds of activity happen with the hands. Here's. Mm. Oh, yeah. So it can yeah. be an offensive as well. We'll see what they, in, in my personal opinion from what I'm seeing, just an offhand, you can yeah. be called for an off offensive yeah. foul there. I'll but clear out. where would that leave us within? Right. 
So we'll see just what, what the breakdown may be in this particular scenario, if that is even the case. That's right. And remember, all this action happened in the last few minutes with Paige Beckers yep. on the sideline. She was in foul trouble early in this game, and then she stepped on the floor and it started raining points for yes. UConn. And she's, she's taken a sub. And to be honest, I have been impressed with the fact that Gino Oriema has had so much faith. He's had two true freshmen on the floor along with some of these other veteran players. But he, he has spoken very highly of them this year and, mm -hmm. and is proving that today. I mean, this is this is going on four minutes that we've waited for this call. Ruling on the floor was a personal foul on 42. It's excessive or unnecessary contact by zero red to the face of the UConn defender. So the personal foul stands. It's going to be intentional foul against red. Okay. We're going to shoot two free throws down here for okay. the personal foul with nobody on the line. Then we're coming down here. We're going to shoot two for the intentional foul against red. UConn's getting the ball. Got it. All right, so what we've been told is that they do see it as an excessive move to the basket. So you can see here, Mayberry, and the question that we had was, was it a basketball play? That offhand trying to hold off, yeah. and you can see a lot of guards try to do that if they yeah. don't have the advantage with the length, trying to hold off the block. Yes. So and they did catch that. Had she stopped Yeah. You know, within the line of her body, that would not have been the call, but because she extends out, that is what will happen. So now the two free throws, first for the initial foul yes. on DeBerry, two free throws for UConn, and then UConn, because of the intentional, and then yes. UConn will have possession with the ball on the sideline. Correct. We did a, good, a great job there. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so Mayberry will get one more, and I'm not sure if she thought that she was going to get a reset because of the announcer. No, that's, no. So now, Yukon will get two. But not before Paige Becker oh. checks in the ball game. So Paige checks in, Caden Samuels will check out. And Paige Beckers will shoot the free throws. Well, I would do that too. Yeah, I would definitely make sure that Paige <laughs> Beckers is available to shoot the free throws as one of the best free throw shooters on the team. She knocks down this one. She'll get one more. And UConn will get it on the side. And by the way, she's been doing all of this with a wrap around that left thumb. I do not know the story there. We have not been told. But she's physical. She's a physical player. She... Yeah has been on the floor a lot the last two days, has been bumped. I'm sure she's gonna go home with some bruises, but that is just par for the course. And you are the player of the year previously, working on that this year as well. KK Arno put herself in a very precarious situation, knowing that she can get the ball in back court. Mayberry with the assignment for Paige Beckers as Caden Samuels. Sorry, Aubrey Griffin able to finish on the other side. This is the biggest lead for UConn as Mayberry has a canny ability of just really holding herself in the air and trying to get a good look off the glass. Now that's a lot different than what we saw in that previous possession when she got the technical foul. Yeah, did not use an arm to clear out that time. Ooh. to the free throw line the last two times for the Jayhawks. Knocks that one down. 11 point game. A little under seven minutes to play in this final quarter. And 
Beckers pulls up from the free throw line, cannot put that one in. You don't see that very often. A missed shot. Who would have thought? Mayberry, another attempt from up top. It's been very interesting. Jackson right now, 12 points. She has a double-double with 10 rebounds. Hasn't had a lot of looks outside of off of offensive rebounds in this fourth quarter. Yeah, they have tried to isolate her a couple times. She's missed when she's taken the shot in close. But yeah, I would have liked to see more touches for her deep in the paint. Outside shot for Nika Mule. In the one woman show tries to get to the rim and yet another offensive work for Jackson. So now within nine is Kansas. And still though, as you mentioned, just maybe his ability to get to the rim. I mean, she was slow, methodical. She took her time and then found space. Mayberry, a lethal scorer for Kansas. And an opportunity now for them to cut into this lead for UConn. Franklin just stays with it on the glass, able to pull it down. And the Jayhawks now with an opportunity to try to cut into this lead. Franklin almost dribbled it off her foot. This is lined up. Nothing there. And that bounces in the hands of Paige Beckers. Less than five minutes to play in the fourth. Paige Beckers looks at the team and says, we're going to slow this one down. So UConn using more of the shot clock as we're approaching the last few minutes of this ball game. Jackson had the switch on Paige Beckers that time. And so what about the take on the inside? KK Arnold finishing at the glass. And that lean is open because of the work Ice Brady just did on the post. Yeah. She pushed her defender up the lane and look at the space. Mm. Defense does not rotate over in time. KK Arnold with a chance at a three-point play. What a take. Ryan Cobbins is going to be called for the foul. Her third. What do you want to see from the Jayhawks down the floor of this trip? Well, you know I'm probably going to say Jackson because I just love the fact that, you know, Leah Edwards still not in this game and Ice Brady has not defended Jackson as well as Edwards did. Four shot at the rim. The rebound and the putback by Samaya Nichols. Yeah, don't forget about Nichols. Yeah. She has been the showstopper from the four position, doing little things very well for this Kansas team. 12 points for Samaya Nichols, now five players four players, rather, in double figures for the Jayhawks. Caden Samuels will check in at the next dead ball for UConn. The dish pass on the inside, a little bit too low for Ice Brady. 16th turnover for UConn. And I do believe that brings us within immediate timeout. So a timeout is called, but it's just not for our media. So for UConn right now, 62 to 53, outside of Paige Beckers, we knew that she can do um, some incredible things on the offensive end, but it's always about that second, third player that's able to help out, whether it be offense or defense. Who's been that player for you so far for UConn? Well, Aubrey Griffin, up until just the last maybe yeah. few minutes of this game, I thought has been the, the X factor for UConn outside of Beckers, of course. Okay. Aubrey Griffin, though, 11 points yesterday. She's got 16 of their points, four or four from the free throw line, four rebounds to go along with it. And she's just been in the right place at the right time, getting deflections, steals, being the anchor on the defensive end as well. Well, since you like her so much, let's bring some highlights up for you, Kelly. Yeah, let's look at her. Look, <laughs> does a good job of posting up there, pushes her defender up the block, able to get 
an easy look at the basket, but I, I just like, look at the hustle. It stays all over the offensive glass and gets paid for it. I'd like to say too, just what UConn we were gonna see after being, I don't wanna say upset because UCLA, this is the first time that they were able to play UConn and be ranked ahead of them. Yeah. But when you could see a team very frustrated with how things went within that game, being down as many as 23, that was somewhat of a shock. So how did they respond? And I think it took them a while to get adjusted in the first half, but you can see them starting to piece things together in the second half. And of course, being led by Paige Beckers. Yeah, and other players emerged too. You saw yeah. Ashlyn Shade get the, the start tonight and she played well, had some good minutes for them, scored some points early. And, you know, now Caden San Samuels still on the floor doing well. KK Arnold, we've seen so much production from her offense and defense. So young players as well coming around these veterans and making this more of a cohesive unit, which is exactly what we wanted to see in yeah. yesterday's game against, U against UCLA. And here's your player of the game, Samaya Nichols at the free throw line. Now at 13, this is her fifth and sixth free throw attempt of the night. See the deep seal by Ice Brady. That goes off the knee. She's able to track it down. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Page sends it out. Brady for three. In and out. Looks like they will stay with UConn. There's a displaced box out. So Samaya Nichols picks up her third personal on that box out. Lost a shoe from Ice Brady. And a lot of action at the top of the key going towards it as the take to the rim by Nika Mule knocked off the leg and it'll go back to the Jayhawks. They will stop playing, just make sure that she's able to put the shoe back on. Seems like all is well. What is that, slip? <laughs> My basketball shoes would never be able to slip on my feet. <laughs> Franklin going at KK Arnold, pulls up the lefty, short on the shot, and Jackson is going to pick up her fourth foul. Well, down to 10 from the other end, and free throws on the way now that both teams are in the bonus. I think if there's one player that can walk away, if there's an extra um, award that goes to any player for most impactful player on a team, it would definitely have to go to Aubrey Griffin. Yeah. We've said her name so much tonight and yesterday, but we said it early too, and right, you think about how you start off a game and to come in and know you just had a loss against a very good UCLA team. You're, you're curious to see the way UConn responds and Aubrey Griffin, she responded incredibly well. And how about the hook off the glass for Franklin? Amazing. That's the third look on for Franklin, knowing that she is a lefty, but I mean, so crafty yeah. with finishing at the rim. Page finds a spot on the floor, in and out. That's ripped down by 
curse beater. Franklin, I mean Jackson running to the rim and finds a nice easy look on the inside and beating Huskies down. It's just a five point ball game with less than 140 in this ball. So a timeout will be called for the Huskies as the Jayhawks have surged back, put on a little bit of a run, but really getting everything with stops and quick buckets on the other end. Yeah, they seem to have done it quietly too. Yeah. All of a sudden, a two possession game and Zakiah Franklin, how many times have we seen her get into the paint? She does not have the size you'd think and then in transition. This is what Gino Oriema was not happy about. Poor transition defense leads to easy offense for Kansas. UConn is left with one timeout, and Kansas have two remaining. How about Kansas getting another opportunity for maybe a possible uh, late game situation? They said they, if they could do it over, yeah, they'd want that opportunity, and they fought their way back into this one, being down as many as 13 points in the second half. I imagine UConn will do whatever they can to stall mm -hmm. Kansas, of course, not needing to foul. But knowing that if there is a foul on either end of the floor, that there will be free throws, but you don't want to give up an easy two. And that was easy. No help coming over. So as we're approaching the one minute mark, seven point lead for the Huskies and they'll continue to take some air out of the ball. Yeah. At what point do you say, should we foul to get some extra possessions? Uh, it almost looks like they have conceded the loss, which does surprise me. But Paige Becker is when it looks like it was, you could, Keep things close, just a two possession game here. Becker's just a spin, no help comes for defense and I would think all eyes would be on Paige Becker's in that situation. So Tyana Jackson actually fouls out of this ball game had four in the previous game. So just a tough, tough night and tough tournament defensively for Jackson. Yeah, two quick fouls in both games, limited her minutes. She was not able to see the floor much at all in the first half. Yesterday against Virginia Tech, this year against UConn, or excuse me, yesterday and then today against UConn. And, and that, you know, that hurt Kansas early on. But Paige Beckers has been, everything is advertised, 22 points today. She has hit two threes. She's perfect from the three-point line. She's been to the line five times, four or five from that area. But these defensive stops, her deflections, her ability to see the basket, find her own shot. I mean, she's just been special. Yeah, absolutely. We always say worth the price of admission, but we've understood what type of player that Gina Ariam was getting out of high school and just so elusive, just a prolific scorer, understands what she needs to do for herself, but also a lot like what we saw in other All-Stars within this tournament, like a Georgia Amor. Win the turn it right. on for yourself as well in others. That's, a, that's the perfect example right there. It's exactly what Georgia Amor did after that very poor first half for her in terms of turnovers and lack of points. She came in the second half and was a different player. So a foul on the baseline. This one is going to go against Holly Kirschcheater. They wanted more of an excessive foul there, but it looks like the officials are going to make sure everything is okay and just have free throws for the Huskies on the other end. And Kirschcheater going for the foul, but gives a lot of contact. Oh, 
I like the fact that you mentioned Paige Becker's high school days. It gives me an opportunity to mention I grew up right next to her. Next, to, she was, she grew up in Hopkins, Minnesota, and from Edina, Minnesota. So we would have been. Well, she's much younger than me, but rival <laughs> high schools. I love the fact that you said that you played against. AZ Fudd's mom. I know, right? It's All right. I aged myself right there. By the way, that is a weird world. You're not there yet, but I am feel like you <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Noted. Noted. Thank you. Um, to feel like, to know that you are watching kids of people you played against, I mean, that's when it comes. I, how can that different. be when I'm 25? You right? are 20. I thought it was 26, but 26. Okay. Yeah, 26. All right, Lucas Haskins, our producer. This is where we roll the highlights for <laughs> the AZ <laughs> mom and, and me. our very own Kelly Day. <laughs> Could you imagine? That'd be great. All right, well, if you're enjoying the Cayman Islands Classic, then be sure to check out theflowhoops.com for ex exclusive content and post-game interviews. Join the conversation at Flow Hoops on all social media platforms. College Hoops tips off right here, and it's been fun to tip off for this non-conference scheduling, pre-conference scheduling tournament as well. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean, there's not a better place, not a better partner, not a better group to be doing this with, Flow Hoops, K-Max Sports. It's been top notch in every way. Yeah. I mean, you already talked about the people that have been able to just work tirelessly and just make sure and ensure that teams were having the best time that they could and the best competition um, on, the, on the court, but also just putting us in a scenario where we're safe and, and having a great time yeah. and on Thanksgiving week. Um, you know, in the beautiful Cayman Islands. So our producer, Lucas Haskins, Cruz Sanchez, our director, Tyler Larkin, Scott, Liz, Alton, Pat, got Albert as well on our cameras, Freddie, Roland, we can go down the line. Luigi has been making sure that we have all been taken care of. That's right, how many lunch and dinner orders? I, I, I have right. four uh -huh. orders okay, on do. the side right now. I don't know. <laughs> You're not <My>, eating. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to eat with four <laughs> games each day. So the peanuts on the yeah. side are just going to have to work for now. That's right. Uh, and it, beyond that, too, just the style of everything. The Caribbean rum cake that we got yeah. from the staff, he, the staff here, Tortuga, one of the supporters. The West End, that's house people here, too. I know the Marriott, a couple of teams were there. The Holiday Inn as well. I mean, we've had a great time just being here. And we, I really felt like we were taken care of this yeah, entire time. Yeah, I mean, there's not been a game or in between a game where multiple people haven't come up and said, hey, what can we get you? How can we, how can we help you? And the, the staff here at the gym, we got to talk to the president of the high school yesterday, mm -hmm. or excuse me, the principal of the high yeah. school yesterday. And I mean, just top notch tournament. Looking forward to seeing the future of this. Of course, this is the inaugural event. Yeah. An unbelievable job by Joanne P. McCauley to yeah. get four top 10 teams, among other great teams that we have seen, one being the Kansas Jayhawks, who we're having the privilege of watching right now. But next year, some great talent, some great teams already signed up to come out to the Cayman Islands Classic. So if you don't have Thanksgiving plans, this is where you need to be. Especially if you are debating to leave Snow. Yeah, you there you go. To make, <laughs> that, let, let that be convincing enough as we're looking at the all-tournament team for the second portion of today as Anissa Morrow, she was so good oh. for LSU all week long. Virginia, Dante Vaughn, oh my goodness. You can go on and on and on about what she's been able to do for Virginia, UConn, Paige Beckers, no surprise there. And Kansas, Kiana Jackson walking away with the all-tournament team, but I think there are a couple of people on this Kansas team that deserve the nod as well. Yeah, it's been a team effort for sure. They're gonna go away with two losses, but two very close games to two highly ranked opponents. Uh, nothing to hang your head about, and you can only get better from these experiences. I love the fact that that Yanta Vaughn was on that all-tournament yeah, team. That's I a agree. player who comes off the bench, yeah. and she was explosive in her two games. 
That game they had against LSU, I mean, she time and time again hit big bucket after big bucket. Sam Brunel, another player yeah. that actually got the start for the first time this season, coming back from last year's injuries. So just good to see them on the floor as UConn, after being taking the loss to UCLA last night, bounce back and get the win against Kansas. And so they will move on to four and two on the season. A great effort by Kansas. Unfortunate with the foul trouble early for Tayana Jackson. I think that would have been a different game. And of course, Aaliyah Edwards, we wish her the best. She was hit in the above the shoulders and the ear area. We did not see her again after right. that. I'm sure just preventative, but you hope that everything's okay there. But UConn proves again tonight that they are still a great team, even yeah. without AC Fudd, as long as you've got Paige Beckers, I think things are going to be okay. I think even down the line, you mentioned it, we know what Paige Beckers is going to do. A hats off to Aubrey Griffin, who was yeah. outstanding for today. And also, too, you're looking at different people down the line. I mean, Ashlyn Shade and her start, I mean, didn't look like she was rattled at all. Came off um, to start the game and was very impressive. So <laughs> it was good to see UConn get the win because I really do feel like even in that, you, you it's like seeing a hero. Yeah. Like exposed. You want to make sure that the greats, yeah. you know, of women's basketball are like in a good standing and to see UConn bounce back, that's that's good. Yeah, it, it really was. And you go back to that game, you know, where they do get beaten by a very good UCLA team. Mm -hmm. And I, I think even that was a good test for them to see yeah, where they are. Obviously they lost that game early to unranked NC State and you know you learn a lot from that game but you know to, to come back and, and come into this tournament and they beat a very good Kansas team. So we're waiting to see if we get a player or a coach for the post game and I think honestly I mean, we have a Flow Hoops reporter on the court sitting with Paige Beckers. I'm not sure if she thinks that's with us or not. Hopefully she'll be able to come over here because there's not a person leading her over here, but Paige Beckers walks away <laughs> as the leading scorer once again for UConn, and it's been a lot of fun just to be able to call these games with you. Yes. Um, so yeah, Paige Beckers taking uh, pictures with everyone right now with the team and just the family and friends she has in attendance and obviously just being a, a notable person as well. We talked about all the different brands that uh, this tournament was able to bring in as well. And Paige Becker is definitely one of those big names that everybody aspires to be. And seeing also the students that yeah. were able to come in yesterday, um, take a little break from class and say, you know what? I'm going to go back to class because I understand what I want to be. So I think we are going to get Paige Beckers on the line. It's Paige for you, Beckers. sister. I, I mean, I don't know if this is padding or just like a body wrap. The, the amount of times that you were on the floor throughout this tournament, you know how to use. You know how to use this. Don't, don't can you do hear this us? Today. Yeah, I can hear. So okay. we got Paige Beckers with us after scoring 31 points in there lost yesterday to uh, UCLA. Now you bounce back, you get the win, and we had a. It was a very interesting start to the game. You were on the bench the first half. And so I, I know that you were able to coach a little bit in the summer as well. You put on your coaching hat, you came back in the second half. What did you see that you wanted to be different um, and, and impact the game like in the second half? I think in the third quarter, we started to get into passing lanes more, um, okay. not let them get into their offensive flow. Um, they have a really good offense. It's a lot of ISO and attack. So the more we denied those passes and didn't even let them catch it, I think they didn't get into the flow of their offense and we got easy transition buckets. Paige, you have a difficult game against UCLA, right? Top two, or team that's number two in the country. You knew it would be a battle. And obviously you guys came up short, even though you had an incredible individual performance. What do you feel like you learned about your team or what did you take from that loss to move you into the game today? I think just the importance of confidence um, in each other, in ourselves. Nobody can give you confidence. You got to dig deep within to find it yourself. Um, and when we practice, it, when we practice, coaches on us, coaches like the environment, coaches the, you miss five shots in a row, can you make the sixth one? So it's just responding well to that. Um, I felt like we got a, like, a lot of great shots um, against UCLA. We just didn't knock them in. So 
just trusting and believing in our work. Um, we work extremely hard um, and just having the confidence that the, the work is going to pay off. I think uh, Coach is really investing in the youth that you have on this roster as well. We saw that for the first time Ashlyn Shading and getting the start today and then we saw KK Arnold getting the start yesterday. But I mean, it's about the other pieces that are able to step up and Aubrey Griffin, if, they, if we could give more awards for all tournament team, I feel like that's one of the names that people should know going forward. Yeah, I think she's the most underrated person on our team. Mm -hmm. The way she does the little intangibles, the little glue stuff, the stuff that doesn't show up on, on the stat sheet. But, I mean, her rebounding today was incredible. The way she knocked down her free throws at the end of the game and just her aggressiveness. We're a much better team when she's aggressive and she's doing all the little things. And she's a, a huge key piece to our team that I don't think gets enough credit for. Well, thank you for uh, just letting everybody know more about Aubrey because she's been absolutely fun to yeah. talk about in this day. So safe travels back. Um, I know you guys got a, a really interesting and fun schedule coming up so just happy to see you back on the floor for sure thank you appreciate it and you're a bad woman it's really nice to see you out there on the floor so i appreciate that i appreciate it i missed it <laughs> thanks for joining us and we'll see you on the other side with everything else down the line so that'll do it for us here at flow hoops uh, for the inaugural women's tournament it's been a lot of fun here in the cayman islands good to see you Paige. and um it's just fun when you can see you know, women that care so much about the game, giving back, how she spoke so highly about her teammates as well. Yeah, you love that. And she said the most underrated player on her team. That mm -hmm. says so much about what she sees in her, calling her up to greatness. We see it now. I don't think she's underrated anymore. I mean, this has been so much fun as we bring this to a close. Eight games in two days. We got through it. Here we go. Thank you for bearing with me through a voice that I'm not even sure um, how it's talking right now. But <laughs> it's been so much fun to our team on the yeah. other side. Flow Hoops taking care of the camera. Liz, you right there. It's uh, recording us as well. We've had such a great time to all the staff here with the Cayman Islands Classic as well. We really do appreciate you letting us be a part of it. And we'll see you next year.